Penny dreams that her stepfather and mother are going to have a baby and she just can't wait to see the baby that results from these two perfect people. Of course, it's not really what Penny is thinking the dream is about. Kate, on the other hand, dreams of a cup of tea beside a trough of cider. And this dream reveals her gift in a beautiful and clear way. Stay tuned to find out how these dreams work and what they mean. Welcome to the Dream Interpretation Podcast. I'm Michael Sheridan. This is another half hour of us eavesdropping on the very personal communication between the spirit world and you through your dreams, because that's what dreams are, a dialogue between you and your higher self. And that's why I focus on dreams. If you want to know what you're meant to be doing right now at this very moment in time, then look no further than your dreams. They contain everything. Through analyzing your dreams, I reveal your potential and the obstacles you need to overcome. I'm very specific. I tell you the superpowers you have, what makes you magnificent, and the bumps in life that are holding you back. These bumps are not in the way, they are the way. To get your dream analyzed on my show, go to dream-analysis.com forward slash podcast, fill in the form there and submit your dream. Uh, that's all you have to do. Uh, or email your dream to radio show at dream-analysis.com. And when I get it, you just sit back and wait. So has a certain symbol ever stood out in your dream? You know it's important, yet you can't put your finger on it. These are actually very important dreams that are trying to tell you something. And they are trying to tell you something that is absolutely important. And one of the things that can help you immensely to interpret these symbols is keys. Symbols are an expression of intent in dreams and keys are the intent. What do I mean by that? For instance, any symbol that implies 180 degrees of vision is about prophecy. It's clear because anything in front of you is the future in a dream and anything behind you is the past. So 180 degrees vision in front is being able to see everything in the future. And 180 degrees, therefore, is the key. And an example symbol that shows this particular key is a high flying bird. When you understand keys, you understand why specific symbols are the perfect expression of that intent. In my free live webinar tomorrow, I explain four keys. And with that simple knowledge, you will tell me during the webinar live the meaning of several dream symbols you have never seen before or you never understood before. I guarantee it. When is this amazing webinar, Michael? Well, thank you for asking. It is Tuesday, July 26th at 11 a.m. And I would love to see you there. Now, it may seem like I run a lot of free webinars, but really I don't. My last one was seven months ago. So go to dream-analysis.com forward slash webinar if you want to register and be at this webinar live. And you can bring any dream related question you want uh, because at the end of the webinar, I'll take, I'll fill questions from every angle and during the webinar, of course. So dream-analysis.com forward slash webinar. Love to see you there. And I know it's almost no notice, but so let's do some dreams. Annette wants to be a healer. Well, the good news for her is that's what the dream she sent me is all about. Let's take a look. She says, Annette from Australia here. I'd like to submit this dream. The first part is a bit fuzzy. Here's the dream. I was in a building of some sort with my husband and we were having a meeting with some men, about three, and I think it was to do with banking or finances. We were near to or sitting at a table. We were going to cook them some food, but we're not confident about the cooking of some sort of meat. There was a bit of laughing and handshaking with the men, but it's all a bit vague. Then the dream changed. I was still with my husband, but now we were in a large conference type venue sitting side by side at a long table. Sitting across from us was Oprah Winfrey. She was showing us a laminated card with foods on it, giving us dietary advice. Running partway through this large conference hall slash room was a rectangular pool of water, not really a swimming pool as the water looked dark. Oprah started to show us, or maybe just me, some promotional photos of herself 
These were displayed on large video type screens spread across the walls of the conference hall. All the pictures looked similar and were all golds and greens. So the backgrounds were gold and green and the garments that Oprah was wearing were also gold and green. As I awoke from this dream, I was thinking, wow, that's a lot of gold. I got quite excited about when I woke up from this as I have wanted to be a hands-on healer and the gold seemed to indicate that to me. But after having looked in your book, I wonder if the green is also significant. For instance, am I jealous of hands-on healers? <laughs> well, you said I am jealous of hands-on healers. Well, you don't need to wonder about that if that's true. So I switched it around because I think it's probably a typo. You said, I hope I you can use this dream. I loved the session that we did together a couple of months ago now. All the best, Annette. Now, I left that bit in because everybody who sends me a dream that I ultimately use on the show, I send them a link so that we can talk about their dream off air. Quite often, people will bring another dream to that session. And I really love those sessions and people really love those sessions. Um, they're way more detailed than what we do on the radio because we have a lot more time. We can sometimes talk for 45 minutes or an hour about a dream. It's meant to be 30, but depending on what I've got on my calendar, I am happy to go over. So it's a definitely a good reason for you to send your dreams to the show. If I pick them, you get a free session with me and that's worth about $400. Uh, so that's really, really good. So let's go back, look at the dream and figure out what it's about. She says, I was in a building of some sort with my husband and we were having a meeting with some men. Okay, so we know because your husband's in the dream, it's going to be about the relationship. But I'm going to kind of skip that because we want to talk about why do we have the other men? You say there's other men in there and the men are shaking hands and so on. And so there's a few layers in this dream. The layer you're interested in is the spiritual gift that you have. Um, you say there's other men there and I think it had to do with banking or finances. Now, you're not sure. You said it's a bit fuzzy, but banking and finances have to do with uh, the heart. And so does the color green, which comes up later on in your dream. And um, we'll tie this together in a moment. You said we were near to or sitting at a table. We were going to cook them some food, but we're not confident about the cooking of some sort of meat. So this straight away tells that it is, it is about spiritual healing or hands on healing. Same thing. That's where you let a spirit or an angel use your body to uh, help somebody else receive healing. You channel the energy, you channel the healing energy, and then the angel or spirit does the work with the energy that you channel. So there's two of you involved, but really you don't have to understand how healing works. All you have to understand is how to channel that energy. And that's what this gift is. And food, of course, uh, is an energy source. Any energy source, regardless of what it is, uh, the most common one is the sun in dreams, represents that you're a hands-on healer. And food is the energy source for our body. So cooking food for people is definitely about hands-on healing because you're preparing food for people to ingest. Uh, definitely a, a, a super symbol that says you've got this gift. But then you also say there was a bit of laughing and handshaking with the men, but it's all a bit vague. So the hands are pointed out in the dream. You know, it's okay that they could shake hands, but the fact that you point out that they shake hands because you have to mention hands because for you as a healer, hands are super important. So that backs it up that we know it's about that. And then that's why the men are in the dream because it's a masculine energy gift, nothing to do with men or women. We all have masculine and feminine sides, but hands on healing is a masculine energy gift. You say, then the dream changed. I was sitting with my husband, but now we were in a large conference type venue. So conferences are going to be about, this is your life purpose. This is kind of like a you getting a glimpse of what was going on before you came to the earth plane. So we expect in that to see what you need to work on and what your gifts are. You said you're sitting by side by side at a long table. So you, uh, the first part you said you were at or near a table. And tables are about what you're accountable for, but you, you're not quite at the table at the other one. But here you're sitting side by side at a long table. So the first part of the dream says you're not quite there yet. It's not on the table for you. You need to do something to put it on the table. Um, but here we know it's something that you're meant to share because that's what long tables are about. We don't sit at a long table just to eat by ourselves. They're always a table for sharing. So sitting across from us was Oprah Winfrey. So now we know straight away because she's a spiritual leader. 
that you are also a spiritual leader. You've got this gift and green and the finances are both about uh, the, our feminine aspect or our heart and spiritual leadership works through the feminine aspect. So that's why she's in there. And that, like, that's why it's a woman. And that's why um, she's wearing the green. You said she was showing us a laminated card with foods on it, giving us dietary advice. So you're going to be, you're going to mix the two because she's given the advice about food and that's about healing. We know from the first part of the dream. So you're going to give healing advice to people, but in very much a leadership kind of way. That's kind of unusual. Typically what we'll see for people who have this gift is they do some hands on healing. They just do that and nothing else. Maybe they will channel alongside it. But to see somebody giving the advice, it's almost like, you know, you're, you're going to write a book. Not that we see that in it, but you're going to write a book explaining it to people. This is how you do this. Continuing on with your dream, you say running partway through this large conference hall slash room was a rectangular pool of water, not really a swimming pool as the water looked dark. So the rectangular pool tells us that you limit your spiritual side because that's what the rectangle is about. And it also, you say, it's not really a pool because the water's dark. So there's something that puts you off about getting into that water. So getting into your spiritual side and the dark then here just represents fears about doing that. Now, we don't know exactly what they are. It doesn't have to be anything big but we still see it in the dream. This is what you need to overcome. You then say Oprah started to show us, or maybe just me, some promotional photos of herself. So you're meant to do this. You're meant to put yourself out there, promote yourself with this gift and with your leadership ability as well. These were displayed on large video type screens spread across the walls of the conference hall. So we can see a couple of things there. We know that you also have the ability to influence people because that's what the if we call these projector screens or they're screens for people they're broadcasting to people they're not interactive in any way so um this is another gift you have it's another masculine energy gift so you can influence people when you have your mind in the right space and you really understand something people are able to get it when you explain it we can go into more detail on this uh, if we have another com another call ourselves all the pictures look similar and we're all golds and greens. So golds and greens are about healing issues around the heart. So this is what you're going to be good at. So it's healing emotional issues, not necessarily just health. Uh, hands on healing is not just for healing the body. It heals uh, mental aspects. It heals emotional aspects. It just works where it needs to work. And you say the backgrounds were gold and green and the garments that Oprah was wearing were also gold and green. So again, it's the merging of the healing ability uh, and the spiritual leadership ability. Probably even a, a counseling skill in here. In fact, there would be as well. You would also be good at counseling because we, Oprah is a guide in a dream. And when we see a guide wearing green, we know that you have counseling skill and that's also part of your healing. And so that might be explaining to people why they get ill or why they can get ill. And here's what you need to do, like avoid this trap where you're getting into this emotional state do this to help alleviate that state or make sure you don't get it in again and then also take this healing because that's going to help have you ever wondered how to unlock the wisdom of your higher self so that you can figure out your life purpose why you're here what you're meant to be doing and what's keeping you off track if so then we have an exciting live event coming up this fall join us for a three-day intensive live virtual event from October 7th to 9th, where we will show you how to answer some critical questions like, how do I identify my unique spiritual gifts? And how do symbols show the solution to what is holding me back? And then what do I do next once I realize what my gifts are or what my obstacles are? We'll also show you how to avoid incurring karma by doing the wrong things. Sign up today at dream-analysis.com forward slash free to secure your free spot at this event. The first 100 to register will get a free copy of the color version of my book worth $35. You can't get this version on Amazon. We reserve it for course participants because supplies are limited. But now you can get it for free. So sign up today before seats run out. Again, the link is dream-analysis.com forward slash free. Sign up today and we'll see you there. 
Penny dreams that her stepfather and mother were going to have a baby and she just couldn't wait to see the baby that resulted from their love. Now, I said, of course, it's not what she's thinking. That's me kind of really putting words in Penny's mouth. Uh, let's have a look at the dream. My mother and stepfather were going to have a baby. This was incredibly exciting for me, as in real life, they were a perfect match and couple and madly in love their whole lives, but they never had a child together. They broke up young and only got back together after my mum had her children and my father had died. That was all in brackets, giving us a little bit of a qualifier. And I love that. Please always include that information because it's very, very useful. And you never know just how useful it's going to be for me. I just couldn't get over how amazing it would be to see this baby that was half him and half her. I felt like it would be some incredible being made out of so much love and out of those two people who were already like two perfect halves of one thing. Soulmates, I suppose. They were having it even though she was in her 50s. And she puts in brackets, I'm in my 50s in real life now. Somehow that was okay. I did think the baby would be a bit like an only child with no other relatives around the same age, but this would be okay. There were lots of people around. Continues on a little bit, another little bit. She said, then I saw Peter, my stepfather, when the baby had been born. He had come home from the hospital. He hadn't given birth to it, I thought. Now, it's a bit confusing here. You say somehow my mom wasn't really involved in this bit of the dream. He said they initially were going to scrap it with the coffee scraps, but he had made sure they revived it and it was thriving. I was a bit concerned that he had left the hospital as I thought the baby shouldn't be abandoned. It needed to be held. My friend Lucy confirmed this with me. Funny, as she some, is someone notable for not being very maternal, but she's had three kids and she did pick up my own child once when she came around and my baby was in the Moses basket. I think I headed to the hospital to look after it. Okay, so Penny, thank you for the dream. Let's go back over it. Now, it looks like it's all about mom and dad having a baby or mom and stepdad having a baby. No, it's not. It's all going to be about you. Obviously, you know this, it's all about you. And we see the issues with uh, Peter, your stepfather in the dream. Like you're almost like you said, he abandoned it. I, I, yeah, they are the words, in fact, that you said that the baby shouldn't be abandoned. So this is really going to be about your issues with your own dad, not your stepdad, but with your own dad. So, but let's go over it again. And that's why I said it's not going to be what you think, because it's going to be about you. And it's going to just be telling you something that I'm, I'm pretty sure you're already aware of. So um, let's have a look. My mother and stepfather were going to have a baby. Well, they did have a baby and that was you. Now, I know you're um, you come from a big family, so you're not an only child. And you kind of mentioned that later on, uh, that the baby would be like an only child. So we'll, I'll get to that, too. This is incredibly exciting for me. I'm going to skip your comments. Um, I just get and get over how amazing it would be to see this baby that was half him and half her. So this is really good. So this has been, this would be about being excited about you coming into the world. Like this is going to be great. My parents are going to have a baby. It's going to be great. Now, do you think that about yourself? Do you think how exciting it is that you are half your mom and half your dad? And it's just going to be amazing to see what you are, what your potential is because you are half him, half her. Now, because you emphasize this so much in the dream, the answer is going to be that this is not likely what you think at all, that you you probably don't even like the earth plane. Um, do write and let me know. But that's likely what it's about. And this dream is healing for that because it's showing how wonderful it is to bring a child into the world. Of course, you being the child. You say, I felt that it would be some incredible being made of made out of so much love. <laughs> so where do you feel like you were made out of love or do you feel like you they just had you and that was it? There was no real special reason for you being brought into the world. They were having it even though she was in her 50s. You're in your 50s. That's OK. Uh, somehow that was OK. I didn't think the baby would be. Yeah, I did think the baby would be a bit like an only child with no other relatives around the same age. But this would be OK. There were lots of people around. So that means that you felt like an only child, even though you're from a large family. I don't know how large, but I know you have siblings. So how does that fit in? How can you feel like an on only child, even though there's other people around? And that's what you say here. They're, that's your words. But that's the issue that 
you are trying to address in the stream by looking at the whole process and saying, look, just coming into the wor this world is just amazing. And the difficulties that you may have as a result of coming in because of circumstance, it doesn't really matter. Now, of course it matters. You have to work on this. And that's the point of you having this dream. You say, then I saw Peter, uh, my stepfather. So we know you're a spiritual leader because you point out his name and Peter is the lead apostle, let's say. So we know that you've got that gift. When the baby had been born, uh, he had come home from the hospital. Um, you skip a bit here. He said, he said they initially were going to scrap it with the coffee scraps, but he had made sure they revived it and, and it was thriving. Well, isn't he great? <laughs> they were initially going to scrap it, but he made sure that they... So it's like, this is the issue with that. It's like, there's definitely an issue there. He's talking about, well, I made sure they did this, but he's not doing it. Um, and so it's going to be about dad and did dad's really show up for you the way he needed to show up uh, or again you're going to know what it is because i know you've worked on this here you say i was a bit concerned that he had left the hospital as i thought the baby shouldn't be abandoned so that's going to be about you feeling abandoned by dad of course it's not really about abandoned i mean unless dad passed away or uh, your parents separated and so on and i know in your case that's not true but it still is that feeling of dad wasn't there for me the way he needed to be and so he was obviously focused on himself or something like that. But that's what you need to work on still. Uh, you've already done some work, but this is obviously deep. Uh, you said the baby needed to be held and that's healing. You didn't get held the way you needed. And you talk about your friend. You say she's not maternal, but she did pick up your baby once. That's crazy. I've had four kids. You have to wrestle babies out of people's arms usually so the fact that she picked the child up once is not uh, a great testament to her but you do say that she's not noted you don't note her for being very maternal um so what else we got i think i headed back to the hospital to look after it so again this is about you healing your state of mind around your own birth and the magnificence of what it should be being dampened in a, in a way once you are born I know it's going to make a lot of sense to you because you've done a lot of this work already, but thank you for sending your dream in. This is from Kate. Now, Kate dreams of a cup of tea beside a trough of cider. This dream reveals her gift in a beautiful and clear way. When I explained the analysis to her, she got it because she could relate to this gift as I described it. So let's take a look. She says, I was somewhere on the TV. There was a teacher. She just had a head and a kind of like a cloud ghost like body. Lisa was there and Hallie Steele was there also. The teacher was older and she was saying, imagine me as a little girl, what do you see? There were flashbacks to her life as a little girl and we were shown a teacup with a trough of cider. I said, a bubbling cup of cider. People thought I was being funny. Uh, I did say it in a funny way. I think it might have been Halloween in the flashback. There was a group of people there and to my far left, there was someone looking at me when I said a bubbling cup of cider, like they were trying to figure me out or why I said it like that. Before that, I was trying to figure out something with Lisa or she was looking at something I had done. I was trying to figure that out. So there's a lot of figuring out going on here in this dream. Let's go back, have a look at the dream. I was somewhere, fine. On the TV, there was a teacher. So you're a teacher, you're a spiritual teacher, spiritual leader. So you're just a head and kind of like a cloud or ghost-like body. So you tend to be up in your head. You need to fix that. Ground yourself. Don't just rationalize your way through life. Lisa and Hallie Steele were there. So Steele here, um, the pun is in the surname Steele, the last name. When you are asked to share yourself, feeling uh, that it's like I've been mugged, somebody stole from me because I didn't really want to share in this setting. And when I talked to Kate about this, she said, yeah, that's that can be how I am. But if I uh, prepare in advance, then I don't have that problem. So that's great. But it's still what it's about. The teacher was older and she was saying, imagine me as a little girl. What do you see? There were flashbacks to hers, her life as a little girl. And we were shown a teacup with a trough of cider. It's a healing ability because serving food or drink in a dream is spiritual healing, hands-on healing, like we just 
discussed earlier in, in previous streams. This is your gift. You're able to look at somebody and you're able to channel them. So instead of channeling up to the spirit world, you can channel into the person. Every one of us has within our aura, let's say, or within our energetic imprint, what we came here to work on and how we're meant to work on it, our gifts and so on, what they all are. They're all embedded within us. And you have the ability to look into a person and extract that just in a similar way that you can channel. And I know you can channel. Um, and you're able to see their gifts. And that's why in this dream, you look at the girl and you see the gift. Now you see it symbolically as the trough of cider and the teacup. And the teacup is about sharing. Tea is a classic symbol for the heart and sharing. Um, and the trough of cider then is saying, you're, you're able to see that this person is here to share her healing gift. Now, of course, in the dream, that's you looking at your own gift, but you can do this with other people. You're meant to share your healing gift with people too. Um, and then people are trying to figure you out. That's the that's really the rest of the dream. I think of may, may have been Halloween in the flashback. So Halloween is also about uh, hands-on healing because it's a time when you go around door to door and people give you food, snacks, of course, but it's still food. It's trick or treat, treat being a pun on healing because a doctor treats people or a healer treats people. And then the food, of course, being symbolic of that too. So that's what Halloween means in a dream. There was a group of people, the group matches in with the, the teacher part that you're here to work with groups of people. And then someone looking at you when you said what you said, they were trying to figure you out. You're, you wonder about how people get you. Do they puzzle over you? And so this is part of the stealing part. It's like, I don't want to be this exposed. I don't want to be in a situation where people are looking at me and don't really get me and they're trying to figure me out. But that's what it's about. You have to put yourself in this position, use your gifts, share it, um, which is great. It's all great, but, <laughs> but that's what it is for you. Uh, I like the gift. I like the idea of looking at somebody and telling them, hey, this is your gift. This is what you're here to do. And I know a lot of people would love uh, to have a session with you for you to just tune in and tell them what their gifts are. Do remember, I have a webinar tomorrow at 11 a.m. and you can register for that webinar at dream-analysis.com forward slash webinar of all things. And there may be a replay, so if you're interested in it but can't attend, register anyway because only the people who register will get the replay if I do send one out. I will see you next week. <laughs>